Hello, in this video I'm going to show you the simplest way to do a Collaborate-based presentation, live presentation, with recording. The goal of this is primarily if you just need to get a presentation up and going. I'm not going to talk about managing more complex interactions with the students during the presentation, just simulating a live lecture without any other complexities. And I'm also going to presume that your presentation is relatively simple. That is, what animations you have are relatively inessential. So this works best if you have PowerPoint, because Collaborate understands PowerPoint, or if you have a reasonable PDF of your presentation. It all also understands um, PDFs. So what do you do? So you're in your session. So it helps to have your session working beforehand. You go to the lower right corner and click on the purple thing, and that opens up the Collaborate panel. And usually it opens on a different, um, usually opens on attendees. <clears throat> what you want to do is you go to Share Content and Share Files. The reason is we're going to upload our file. Now, again, image, as it says, image, PowerPoint, or PDF files. If I look at the PowerPoint for this presentation, it's 25 megabytes, whereas the, the PDF version is only 7.8. It's worth trying to, to make your file as small as possible, but I'll show you. You can just drag it over, or if you click on the plus or the box, you'll get a normal um, dialog box, open dialog box. It's not fast to upload and process, so uh, that's why I pre-uploaded this. This was much quicker, but this means that you really ought to get it in early. Um, that is, try to upload all the materials that you want well before the lecture starts, because depending on traffic, depending on the server, who knows what's going to happen. Once it's uploaded, it'll look like this, main room files. And if you select it, then the share now button starts. So <laughs> share now does not mean share right now. It means start now, start the process of sharing. And there's another step in that process. So you click on share now, and what you get is a preview. So you have thumbnails down the side. These thumbnails will be available throughout your presentation, so you can use them to jump around. And when you click on one, as I accidentally did there, it shows up to everyone in the room. Now, one of the nice features here is that you can draw on the presentation. So I select a present, select a pencil, and I can underline something. This goes a long way to kind of dealing with some of the animations. I mean, not obviously material ones, but, but things that trying to indicate or highlight or emphasize part of the slide. This works pretty well. Slide, you can advance the slides just by using the features, the next and previous slide buttons at the right beneath the slide in Collaborate. And of course you can jump to an arbitrary slide by clicking on its on its thumbnail, which can be handy for going back um, or if you're trying to navigate through. So get your slides in, start sharing them. If you want to record, which I strongly recommend, open the upper left menu and click start recording. Now, the way that I handle sort of minimalistic um, question answering is have the students ask their questions in the chat. Because what will happen, I don't know if it'll work because it's just me. Ordinarily, this will show up as a box right here. And so it's not that hard to see what's going on and, and, and have that question, even if you close the Collaborate, have that question pop out at you. And then you can respond verbally. I found that worked really well in my presentation. Students could type what they wanted to type, and then I would just answer it. Um, and that, that also allows them to stack questions and for you to say, I'm going to hold off on that question until later. And that's really it. Um, the only small thing that you might want to keep in mind under the settings is that by default, if you go to session settings, everyone, this says part, what participants can do, you definitely want them to have chat messages available. If you don't want them to do audio or video, you can disable both audio and video. But by default, it allows them to draw on the whiteboard. 
And I have never seen this to be a problem. In fact, it can be helpful because you can let the students indicate what they don't understand or a or word they don't know or, or other uh, aspects. So I think that's helpful. Anyway, that's all you need to do when the, when the session is over. When you're done your presentation, just hit stop recording. And the recording, it will take a few minutes to show up. You have to go back over to the panel. Now, here's the tricky thing, because again, Blackboard's one fundamental user experience dictum motto, I guess, really is hide the good stuff. So where does the recording show up? You have to go to this menu in inside the Collaborate session, and then you see there's a little bit of a panel here, and you can click on recordings, and there all your recordings show up. If you give your session a nice name, then the recording will have a nice name as well, making it easy for you to find. You can make the recordings downloadable, which I strongly encourage you to do, um, not just to download it for yourself, but to let the students download it so that if they have spotty internet, they can, they can still review the presentation at their leisure. You can get a link which you can then email to anyone um, so that they will then have access to the recording. And that's how you do a very simple, very easy presentation in Collaborate. Um, it works well for things without complex animation, and it really is just a very simple way to get your, your slides online and recorded. Cheers.